Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. The Hurricane Washington is finally back. We got quite a bit of stuff to talk about. We have quite a few storms. Uh, as you can see, we got that system there in the East Pacific. I actually want to zoom in on this so it's a little bit easier to see. Now I need to wait for it to blue, which is not what I was expecting. So as you can see, here are our areas of investi uh, investigation here. Got NS 92S at 30 miles an hour, 1005 millibars, 8 degrees south, 52 degrees, 0.4 east, 70% chance in the next 48 hours, 70% chance in the next 7 days. NS 93W, uh, 20 miles an hour, 10, 10 millibars, 30 degrees north, 143 degrees east, 0 in the next 48 hours, 20 in the next week. Invest area there in the East Pacific. Uh, not currently doesn't have a number, it's just an area of disturbance. 0% of the next 48 hours, 30% chance of the next couple days, over the next week. Um, for 2024, tropical weather, just an overview of our tropics, May 15th, 2024, out of 1530 UTC. We currently have had 18 named, uh, named storms, 10 hurricanes, 3 major hurricanes. So here's that one in the East Pacific that's got a 30% chance of a tropical cyclone formation. Um, as you can see, that's its region right there. We do have quite a bit of uh, disturbed activity. I do want to lo look over the forecast models and talk a little bit about where we expect this storm to go, what it's going to do, is it going to stall, it's going to produce a lot of rain, talk a little bit about that uh, and about where it's going to go and uh, just the, the overall forecast of that system. Wherever the tropics are, I like to put there. It's just too specific right there. So if we go into time, you do see it does take a little while for it to get going. Uh, we see those isobars starting to close up um, as it moves north. Uh, it gets very, very close there to land. Doesn't actually make landfall, but does probably does bring some gusty winds, probably upwards of 50 miles an hour, gusting up to. 60, 70 mile per hour wind gusts and bringing some very heavy rain. Definitely rough seas and possibly uh, some storm surges possible there too. So rough seas are definitely going to be an issue all across southern Mexico. For sure. For the southwest Mexico, I guess would say. And then it just moves away and dissipates and falls apart. Uh, and so the biggest threats we're going to be looking at with this system is going to be those heavy rains that we're going to see with this system. We're going to be seeing those strong winds. And we're going to be seeing this possibly of a really strong rip current and possibly even some storm surge. This is all really going to depend on how close to land it gets and how strong this system gets. So dealing about rain, that is what I want to know. So you can in fact see right along the immediate coastline um, right there. We do have quite a bit of rain right there. Quite a bit of rain there. I do. I do expect a, along the immediate coastline. I do expect seven to ten inches of rain along, along the immediate coastline, with some areas getting higher, closer between ten and fifteen inches of rain are possible. And then it just kind of meanders off the coast and it just falls apart. So that's going to be uh, what we're watching with that system. Now I do want to go off and talk about other systems. So here's Invest 93W. There it is, around twenty miles an hour, fifteen knots. Air pressure at 10.08 millibars. As you can see, it is also very disorganized. You can also just see um, the latitude is very, very low to the equator, so there's not a lot working with the Coriolis forces. So it's taking time to get the storm working again, getting its act together. I do want to talk a little bit about forecast models. So we also have an idea of where this system is going to be going. Areas is going to impact. Another thing I want to talk about. Let's see what's the So there it is, way down here. I, yeah. It takes quite some time uh, for it to get developing, but as again, the farther north it moves, the more likely it's going to develop and intensify. Um, so again, it does show it to becoming a pretty large system. Uh, uh, Guam and the Mariana Islands are going to be the ones that are going to be affected, directly impacted by the storm. 
993 millibars, so not something super strong, uh, but we do expect to see uh, up to 60 to 70 mile an hour sustained wind or possible, probably 50 to 60 are going to be more likely with that. And then with those winds gusting close to hurricane force and those storm surges also going to be possible with this. So if you live, again, if you live in this area, if you live in Guam, the Marina, Marina Islands, start to plan ahead. They are part of the United States, so you can, I do, ex I would expect people to uh, try to get in a plane and you know, evacuate to mainland United States or to another country away from where the storms would be impacted. And those are the main impacts that we talk about here, but there are also other impacts with main storms that do make landfall in the United States. Um, you have indirect flooding, so you have the flash flooding, uh, freshwater rainfall, and then of course you also have the tornadic impacts where you can see some tornadoes spin up with these hurricanes. And last but not least, we do have Invest 92S, 30 knots, 8.1 degrees south. I do want to uh, figure out where this, <laughs> figure out where this one is at. Okay, so it does look like it's south. Oh, I wonder I'm confused. I'm like, that doesn't look like the right storm. Oh, okay, uh, off the coast of Africa. I had to figure out where that was before I... Went and looked at it on the uh, tropical, the forecast map. <laughs> All right, here we go. Indian Ocean. There it is, folks. As you can see, it does begin to move. It is moving south. Not going to be a terribly powerful system. Relatively weak in a short-lived system, thankfully. But it does look like we'll have other systems to watch out for south of India. And another one impacting the northeast Indian coastline. Another system that will be watching very slow moving. So, again, that one does look like it's going to be bringing a big rainfall threat. Again, it is going to be something we'll be watching out for. So, if we do get the Indian Meteorological Agency um, picking it up, uh, we will be talking about it. And also the Joint Action Warning Center and seeing what they say about any other systems that develop in this area. We will also definitely be talking about that for sure. That really wraps it up for this. There's not a whole lot going on. As you can see, this is what we're looking at right now. Uh, Invest 93W there off the coast north of Papua New Guinea. There we got Invest 92 as I had a 70% chance of tropical cyclone formation. Um, and then we have that system off the coast of mm -hmm. southern Mexico. These are the storms that we're looking at. 2024 North Atlantic hurricane season does appear. All models are showing that it's going to be an active hurricane season. But that is something that we do want to monitor over the next um, several weeks and months. As the 2024 North Atlantic hurricane season um, starts to wake up, we won't really know until it ends in November. That's when we know how active it truly was. And so that's what we're looking at right now. Do expect it to be very, very active. So stay tuned if you found this video useful or helpful. Uh, feel free to subscribe to the channel, like this video. And if you're interested in becoming a Patreon, links in the description for that below. And if you want to become part of the Hurricane Watch thing, Links for our Discord are going to be there also. Thank you so much for watching. That's been today, guys. Thank you for watching. As always, peace out.